Uh, this is the pastime of Narsimha Deva. Super reduced man. Master. Yeah. Hare Krishna. So today we have the pastime of uh, Narsimha Deva. In fact, uh, this is uh, one of the most important festivals in Krishna Consciousness. And everybody knows the story of Prahlad Maharaj Narsimha Deva. Basically, in short, Prahlad Maharaj was a great devotee, a Mahabhagata, right from childhood. And he was within the womb of his mother when he was there. He was instructed by Narada, child is alive in the womb, you know, so many pastimes like that. And Narada Muni knew because of his Divya Shakti that this child is not ordinary. He is the Mahabhagata. And he instructed the child when he was in the womb of his mother, Kayadu. That's a separate story how it happened. Hirani Kashipu had gone for some tapasya. So Devatas came and they attacked his palace and could easily win. And then when they 
they, were, they saw his wife is pregnant. They were very worried because already one Hiranyakashipu, there was so many problems. They thought now one more is coming. So they thought we will deal with this child. So we take this woman now with us and we will, you know, keep her in watch. The moment the child is born, we will see if another Hiranyakashipu will kill him. So, but what happened was uh, that they were doing like that, taking the woman away. At that time, Narada came and Narada said, this is abominable, what is this behavior? They are dragging somebody's wife like this. And Narada told them, the child is not a demon. He is a great devotee of the Lord. Even if you want, all of you cannot together kill him. Narada knew who is a person who is great servant of the Lord coming and so all the Devatas they had great faith in Narada Muni so immediately they paid obeisance to Narada, Narada and you know, they recognized their mistake and now they started circumambulating Kayadu knowing inside the heart and a womb a great soul is there so they all circumambulated paid obeisance to the child and went away they did not touch the woman or the child and then what happened was, uh, she was very worried. She said, now I stay in this palace, everything has been attacked. Uh, please give me shelter. So Narad Mani, even though he is a Brahmachari, even though he is a you know, great servant of the Lord, as a Brahmachari, definitely we cannot keep woman with us. But he is not an ordinary person. He is a Mahabharata. He said, okay. Time situation, okay. And then in his ashram, Kayadu is there. And she first asked him that, give me the blessing that my child will be born only after my husband comes back. Because she knew all the Devatas cannot fight with her in the Kashmir, it's too powerful. So after my husband comes back, then only my child should be born. Otherwise, I'm worried of the protection of the child. So Narada said, blessed. And then Narada Mani was, as his nature, daily telling about the glories of the Lord to her. And she was too anxious about the husband's return and about the child. Uh, but in the womb of that woman was a Mahabhagata. Now he is hearing uh, with relish. And Narada, you know, he is known as the greatest of the Acharyas, he is speaking Krishna. And the child is drinking. Just like we drink so many things, we have taste for so many things. If somebody switches on TV, he cannot switch it off. Till uh, night, eyes are painting, body is painting, then we switch it up. This, because we have a taste there. But in ta people of taste for Krishna Katha, like the Goswami, they have no time to sleep. But this taste will make you liberated. The other taste will destroy you. So, Prahlad Maharaj, being the great soul, was drinking and drinking Krishna Katha. And therefore, Narad Muni is his guru. And when at an appropriate moment, when Hiradakashpu came, she thanked him and went back and then she gave birth to Prahlad. Now the two names are very significant. Prahlad means Pratrishna Rupena Ahada, spatially happy, spiritually happy. And here Hiranyakashipu has come back after some big benediction from Brahma. What was the benediction he had? He wanted, because he was enjoying nicely, he wanted some more benediction because he didn't want to die. He wanted essential enjoyments to go on. All the karvis are like that. In fact, devotee is waiting to die. He wants to go back to Krishna. But the karmi is, they want to, even though their life is wretched, they want to continue living somehow. <coughs> Nobody wants to die. So what happened was, Prahlad is Prakrishna Rupena Ahlad is spiritually ecstatic. And Hiranyakashipu is, with all the sensual enjoyment we can imagine in this world, Hiranya means gold, Kashibu means sex, soft bed for sex. He has no other thing he wants in life. A typical man of today is Hiranya Kashibu. Small Hiranya Kashibu. He is a big Hiranya Kashibu. So he is definitely a sinful man, can never be a devotee. So he is a demon and here is a devotee. The greatest of devotees in the history and greatest of demon in the history, they are in the same family. Just imagine a contrast, and definitely some arguments will happen, and that happens. Uh, and Bhagavatam before that goes on to glorify Prahlad Maharaj that he shows all ecstatic symptoms, uh, just like a small child. 
Uh, when he's in the lap of his mother, feels, com- feels completely protected, completely you know indifferent to any external situation. Sometimes he's passing urine, sometimes he's uh, bathing. He just surrendered. You know, so many things are happening, but he just surrendered to the Lord. And sometimes when he's very alone, you know, the small children start crying, and the mother comes, they start laughing, they're so happy. Correct. Okay? But these are only reflections of the original love for Krishna. Prahlad Maharaj was in Vasila Rasa to the Lord. Vasila in the sense of being the child of the Lord. Vasila you can either be the father or the child. Here he was in the mood of the child of the Lord. And he is showing all those ecstasies. When he is not able to see Krishna, he is crying intensely. And when he sees Krishna, he starts laughing and dancing. He is so happy. And this is a very advanced state of spiritual life. But with his pure heart, he could experience it. But we cannot experience it because we do not have that pure heart. What we see in this world is only reflection. We don't see the real thing. The love of mother and father that we see in this world is a reflection. And the fools get lost into this reflection. They have no capacity to see the reality. So then what happens after all this, Naraj Muni says to Vidhishthir Maharaj, he is relating this pastime later to Vidhishthir Maharaj, and he says to Vidhishthir Maharaj that this saintly boy was tortured and there were an attempt to kill him by Hiranyakeshi. Vidhishthir Maharaj says, wait a minute, such a great soul, I, I cannot imagine why a father will kill such a soul. We have seen sometimes parents do punish the children, but they are not envious of the child ever. This is a contradiction. On one side you have such a noble child, other side a father. Why will a father try to kill him? I cannot understand this at all. It's shocking to me. Because I never heard in the history a father trying to kill a child who is so noble. So as a gentleman he is saying, please explain this to me. So then he begins the pastime, Narad Muni, and he explains that, uh, that Hiranyakashipu, they were the brother of Hiranyakashipu, Hiranyaksha. Ravana Kumbhakarana, that the previous birth is Hiranyakashipu and Hiranyaksha. And next, last birth is Shishupal and Dandravaka. There are three births taken by Jaya Vijaya. Actually, they are great devotees, but they took the role of great demons because Krishna wanted to fight them. So they came to fight with Krishna. They play the part very nicely. So what happens is that Hiranyakashipu uh, puts Prahlad Maharaj on the training of two teachers, Shanda and Avarka. The Shanda and Avarka are sons of Shukracharya. Shukracharya is a, not a, we can say, at this moment. He did not make a nice judgment because you should not be a guru of an atheist. Here is a Hiranyakashipu who is a drunkard, who is a sense gratifier, correct? He is doing all sinful activities. Whatever we know, four sense, intoxication, gambling, it is a sex mean, everything is doing to the limit. Why will, just like Prabhupada and anybody used to go for becoming a Shishya, Prabhupada said these are the four conditions. Sometimes he used to ask Prabhupada, Prabhupada can you relax one of them with you? Prabhupada said no. The process will not work. So then what happened that Hiranyakashipu was addicted to all the sinful activities. He used to be rather high, he used to be copper, he used to be so drunk. But still, he was bored and very sad. He was never happy. And here is Prahlad Maharaj, who was bliss. Always bliss. That is real happiness, spiritual happiness. So then what happens is that Prahlad Maharaj uh, once was called by the father, small five-year-old boy, the father is on Simhasana and he is sitting in the palace and Prahlad Maharaj calls. So he comes, pays obeisance to his father. The devotee has all the qualities, all the etiquettes. And Hiranyakashu, after that, he picks the child and keeps on his lap. He is sitting on Simhasana and it's very happy. My dear son, tell me, what is the best thing you have learned in your so-called Guru? We had a class with Shubhanishar. I was talking about Vidya and Avidya. We are all locked in this material world and suffering like anything. Vidya means which you can relieve me from this suffering, which is called real Vidya. 
there is something called which looks like vidya but it is not vidya big big buildings are there colleges for that they teach you what is avidya which does not help you one point to save you from the suffering and going in this world no way that is called avidya and pralal maharaj is a great soul and he is the son of the king so they want to train him to the as administrator So the first thing they're telling about politics, king means politics. Any politician means politics. Politics mean there is something called friend and something called enemy. Devotee does not see like that. For a devotee, everybody is a friend. He sees everybody as son of God. So how can for a devotee there can be somebody as an enemy and somebody as a friend? He doesn't like that kind of a consciousness. But politics means he is my enemy and he is my friend. ये हमारा दुश्मन है ये हमारा दोस्त है ये चीज मेरा है ये चीज उसका है यू नो दिस इज हाउ वी आर ऑल माइंड इज क्रिपल माइंडेड ऑल ऑफ अस आर क्रिपल माइंडेड विद्या विनय संपन्न ने ब्राह्मण ने कवि हस्तरी श्री छह वसपा के जो पंडित आ समदर्शन आ पंडित आ मींस इक्वल दिस इज एवरीबॉडी एज सन कृष्ण ही विशेष वेल फॉर एवरीबॉडी इवन फॉर हिज एनिमी ही डजंट हैव दिस ड्यूअलिटी टिल आवर माइंड इज एजिटेटेड टू ड्यूअलिटी we cannot be committing to the lord it's difficult mind should not be polarized mind should be peaceful and blissful so when chanda and our ka teaching in enemy friend enemy friend is disinterested see is silent as a polite boy he is not speaking anything because instead of fools actually there is no use to speak it's sad you know diamond should not be thrown on the streets They are given to somebody who is submissive. Therefore, an intelligent person only teaches when there is a submissive student. Otherwise, he is silent. An acharya doesn't open his mouth. He behaves like a normal man. There is no use to waste time with a foolish man because you cannot teach anything by fighting. If somebody argues with the guru, guru will become silent. There is no use to teach. Him. Somebody should be submissive. Then the process does not work. No college allows teaching in that way. Yeah, all the students they argue with me and teach you, bogus. Now it's a process. Teaching is a process. Therefore, Vedic culture, you see, there is guru. Even in Bhagavad Gita, till the time Arjuna was arguing with Krishna, Krishna was silent. He did not speak anything. But the moment Arjuna surrendered in the second chapter, sixth shloka, Karpanya Dosha Pahata Sabhava. राधा <laughs> then he makes offense to that and i am responsible for that offense so good teacher means he knows what to expose to who that's a good teacher otherwise vomiting will happen a small child if you give him overdose he will not be able to digest so as a preacher of krishna consciousness it is very expert so prahlad parat is said but then what happened was that he was uh, Uh, trained uh, by this avidya school all of us are actually going to school of shanda and avarta only none of us are going to narada school okay all shanda and avarta school but yes it has its own utility this avidya we can use for our maintenance because through this body only we have to serve krishna correct so that way both values should be there but goal should be vidya and avidya is a utility today it's a reverse in the society goal is avidya And Vidya is a utility. Krishna make me pass this Vidya exam. <laughs> We are turning it around. It should be other way around. We use this Vidya to keep ourselves fit, so that we can really gain Vidya. That is real knowledge. That's why I request everybody: morning and evening, spend time in Vidya, and some eight, nine, ten hours. That's more than enough. We spend for Vidya. Something like that. So then, when Shanda and Avarka taught him enough Avidya, he was silent, as if he had understood everything. They took him to the father. Father said, "Yes, my dear son, kept him on his lap." I said, "Beta, tell me, what did you learn in the school? You know, what do you expect? Five-year-old child, 
you are eight year old. Okay. The boy comes eight. Chandru. Huh? Chandru. Okay. Uh, age, age, eight. Ten. Eleven. He is eleven. Uh, just giving exam is eleven. Five year, imagine. Still smaller, smaller, smaller. <coughs> five year, very small boy. So small. He was only five year. So. Hiranyakesh was asked, tell me, what is the best thing you learn? And what do you ask? Suppose you ask a child, what do you learn in the school today? What the child will say? C-A-T cat, B-A-T bat, like that. And father, mother will laugh. Later. So he was just wanted some fun out of affection. You see, even with all these qualities, he is called a demon. Why? Because he did not surrender to Krishna. So you may have all the social etiquettes, still you are a rakshas. Ravana also had a lot of learning. Even uh, there was one more personality, Jarasandha, very charitable, lot of qualities, but still is called a rakshas, demon. But then what happens is, Prahlad Maharaj says, and Vedanyasa does not write Prahlad Vacha, he says, Shri Prahlad Vacha. Shri, Shri means, uh, he is giving an executive. Why? Narasimha Deva says, you are the greatest of mighty movies. He is greater than even. Vedavyasa, in one sense. Because Narasimha Deva says that Prahlad Maharaj also writes in the purple and among the different Mahajanas, we have 12 Mahajanas. Prahlad is the greatest. In fact, sometimes some Christians don't understand because Prabhupada, when he was preaching in the West, he gave all respects to Jesus. He said he sacrificed his life to spread the name of the Lord. So sometimes they ask Prabhupada, then Prabhupada, why don't you become Christian? <laughs> Prabhupada smiled. He said, no, we have greater examples. Because at the time of crucifixion, one time Jesus says, My Lord, why did you forsake me? And we all know Prahlad Maharaj, not one attempt to kill him. There were numerous attempts to kill him. He never thought like that. My Lord, why did you forsake me? Prabhupada said that is a hairline difference between a Mahabhagata, a supreme liberated devotee of the Lord and a great devotee. We have many great examples, but we do respect at the same time. Due respect should be given. So then what happened that the Prahlad Maharaj says now, Shri Parharadwar, what does he say? Tad manye asuri varya dehinam sada samuj vehina niyama satkraha hitvad patam riya andakupam panam gato yat harima shayeta he says, my law, my father, my dear father. See, you are locked in this situation because he is in the family life. And you are stuck in all these dualities. Your mind is so disturbed. I think the best instruction. You are asking me the best instruction. is Because he asked. Otherwise, he doesn't want to speak to his father. It's a waste of time. He not learn anything. But he, because he has asked, he is opening his mouth. Okay, you are asking me what is the best thing I know. I am going to speak now. To whom I am speaking? He doesn't say father. He says Asura Variya. He says, he is fearless. Huh? Oh, best of the Rakshasas. <laughs> Asura Variya. Asura means Rakshas. Variya means the best. Oh, best of the Rakshasas. What is that? Is best thing I know? Sadhu. Sadhu means an executive also. Tata Sadhu Manye. The best thing I know. Asura Variya. Oh, best of the Rakshas. For whom? Dehinam. Those who are trapped in this body. Sada samudvigna dhyam asadgraha. Sada means always. We are disturbed. Dhyam asadgraha. We are always, our intelligence is disturbed. Dhyam is intelligence. Why? Asadgraha. We are trying to make a settlement in a place which is temporary. All of us. Sometimes you have to go to the heart attack news. I have a phone. I have a phone. I have a phone. I have a doctor. Correct? Sometimes in TV we see symptoms of heart attack. We are noting no. Because we know any time we will die. We can die. So you are always scared. He said we are always in anxiety. Why? We are trying to settle down in a place which is temporary. Everybody is in anxiety. So he says, my dear father, do something now. What? Hitvata patam grihe andu kumam. You have come to this condition. Why? You gave up spiritual culture. And you have jumped into this andu kumam. Andu kumam means blind well. You jump inside that you break your legs and you cry. Nobody will help you. 
So similarly, there are two kinds of householder life. One is called Grihast, one is called Grihameni. When husband and wife come together just to enjoy senses, that is called Grihameni. Typical 99% marriages today. I don't know why they do a celebration. It's a waste of time. What is there to celebrate? Cats and dogs also live together. They don't do celebration. Celebration is when they are entering Grihasash. It's an occasion to celebrate. Because Grihasash is nothing but opening of a temple. Temple opening, there should be a celebration. Husband and wife are coming together to worship the Lord. It's a temple thing. Celebration should be there. Same. That's cats and dogs. They just demonstrate the money in society. There's no meaning in anything. And nowadays the marriage also doesn't last. They spend crores. So many marriages we have. And six months it brings. <laughs> so he says, my dear father, this kind of a marriage life in which you are also in is like jumping into a blind well. What happens in a blind well? Any householder will know that. All the problems, not one person around you wants to help you. You simply have to cry alone. <laughs> this problem. So simply keep crying. Nobody is going to help you. You have landed in this condition. Andhukupa means blind well. Sometimes we see in the cities also they make this big holes for digging a well or something and some child slips into that. Hey, nobody can hear him. He is crying but nobody can hear him. So what, I should, what you should do, my father, he is giving conclusion now. Vanam gato. Vana means now grihastha, then vanaprastha. Take vanaprastha. Vanaprastha means go. Tapo vana you go. I particularly proper said best go to Vrindavana instead of going to other vanas today. Vrindavana, the best vana to go for anybody. Where Lord is being worshipped. Vanam gato yad hari maashre. Go to the Vrindavana and take shelter of hari. In one shloka, how much he has spoken. He is an acharya. Five-year-old boy. But he is to Even Shukadeva Goswami who spoke Bhagavatam was only 16 year old. Age is not a criteria. Knowledge is a criteria. Correct? You can keep meditating on this shloka. So many things he has said. Now what happens is, Father, when he hears that, he always had Hiranyakashipu as any. Sorry, Vishnu as his enemy. Because he killed his brother. Varade. His brother was creating another nuisance. So Lord came down as Varadev and killed him. So he always took Vishnu as his enemy. So now is he thinks that somebody has come from the enemy camp, Vishnu's camp, from Vaishnava, and spoiled the head of my child. Many times it happens today. Because people are mostly now learning Kashyapas. If the child is becoming serious in Krishna consciousness, parent are kiss me sikai sa pakwas ko. Bora harinam jabkaro pagalo gate. So, Pastor said, He said, He said, He said, He said, He said, He And then what happens is that Father doesn't take it very seriously at this time. He said, hey, Somebody is spoiling the intelligence, keep better security in the school, better security in your Gurukul. See, nobody comes inside, no spies come from Vishnu and spoil the head of my son who is going to be the king next. So then what happens? Because his mind is only enemy friend, enemy friend. He has not tried to understand the great instruction Prahlad Maharaj has given. Correct? Because he is only thinking enemy friend, enemy friend. Therefore, if your mind is disturbed by enemy friend, you cannot advance in Krishna consciousness. Devotee's mind should always be easy. Then what happens? They call him and Shandai Navarka and the Guru Guru. They were, had a plan that if this child can tell the name of the person who taught him, we will tell to Hiranyakashipu. And Hiranyakashipu will catch this person and kill him. You know, punish him at least next time. Because he was practically cut down in the universe. Only Brahma and Shiva were outside his country. This was Hiranyakashipu. Very powerful. So then what happened? They called the child and they said, so, Who oh, is so nice boy? You tell me who? told you all this thing. Other boys don't speak all this. What you do? <coughs> Take shelter of Vishnu and all. So, Prahlad Maharaj is silent for some time. Then he says, because they are asking, otherwise he doesn't speak. But whenever he opens his mouth, Veda Vyasa doesn't write Prahlad Maharaj. Shri Prahlad Maharaj. Prahlad Maharaj says, I heard there is something called mine you know, and para others. First time I am seeing this. I pay obeisance to the Lord 
whose deluding energy makes the misconception of I and mine in this world. I pay all my respects to the illusory energy of the Lord, correct? Which makes I and mine. Everything belongs to the Lord, but this I and mine. We will have this conception. First time I have seen this. So, Shanda and Amak, <laughs> they didn't get the answer and then they keep budging him. He says, see, I can't help it. Just like I didn't attract it to the magnet, my heart is attracted to the lotus foot of Vishnu. I am helpless. So, they become very angry and they shout and they howl at him. They say, bring a stick, they beat him, this, that. They cannot touch it. He's protected by the Lord. But they shout at him and they try to harass his mind. But anyway, his heart is, he switches off. At this time, you know, he switches off. His, he goes back to the lotus foot of Krishna. No use to speak to fools. No use to throw diamonds on the street. Never do that. And then what happens is that they keep brainwashing him. And then after some time, say a few months of brainwashing, teaching him politics, mind, his enemy, friend, how to make money, how to enjoy senses, how to, you know, all the thing. In fact, they say Britishers introduced divide and rule. That is also there in them. They taught him how to... There are four ways a king can deal with a rebellious person. One of them is divide and rule. All the four are there. He, how to award, how to sum off, the enemy. Let us not go to that. No time. After the offering gets over, we will start the art. The next one happens is again calls uh, after a few months and uh, Hirani Kashyapu asks and now he puts him on the lap second time very closely and tears are coming from his eyes in second time out of affection and child mouth it is falling small child is sitting here and he's smiling because he's thinking of Krishna not because of father he's in his own samadhi and <laughs> tears of the father are my dear child, so much you have studied now again in the school. Please let me know what is the best of thing you have got. Now Prahlad Maharaj says, Shavadam Kirtanam, before that, Shri Prahara Lubacha. Shavadam Kirtanam Vishnu, Smaranam Parasevanam, Archanam Vandanam Dasyam, Sakyam Atmanivedanam. Iti Pumsar Pita Vishnu Bhakti Chenava Lakshana. Like that, he continues. The basic meaning is the Vishnu can be served in nine ways, my father. Nine ways. Hear about him. Talk about him. Think about him. Worship his lotus foot. Shavadam Kirtana Vishnu Smaradam Padasevanam. Arjanam. Worship him. Like you do Arti. Arjanam. Mandanam. Offer prayers to him. Make friendship with him and fully surrender himself, yourself to him. Like that, my Lord, my Father, we can worship Vishnu in nine ways. This is the best thing I know. My Father now takes a child, picks him up and throws him on the ground. Just He cannot hear the name of Vishnu. You know, he's so... Only enemy friend is there in his heart. So he asks him, my dear, you know, he asks Shanda Navarka, come here. What are the nonsense you are teaching this child? Man? He carries the Bhagavad Gita. So Shanda and Navarka say, see, we have not taught all these things to And don't insult Brahmanas like this. <laughs> they are so-called Brahmanas. So Brahmana cannot take a salary in a shameless condition. They are taking salary. Therefore, he has audacity to scold. When Chandragupta Maurya once only to Chanakya asked some question in an indifferent way, Chanakya walked out and never come back. Dignity. He is not a salaried man. He was his guru. So what happens here, the Shandara was salaried people, so they are still standing there shamelessly and saying, see, don't insult Brahmanas like this. And we didn't teach him all this. These are all, I don't know from where he has learned this. So he looks at the child. From where you learnt all this nonsense, then eh? Worship Vishnu in nine ways. With a classic battle between priest and atheist, developing one. So Prahlad Maharaj, now what to answer? He doesn't want to reveal the name of his Guru Narada. There is no use. This person will simply try to create. He cannot touch him also. Try to create disturbance. He says, Matarina Krishna, again, Shri Prahlad Vacha, Matarina Krishna, Parato Satova, 
mito vipadde tagraha vratana ok sorry this is over ano this is a shloka madhirna krishne parato sato va mito vipadde tagraha griha vratana adant ko vi vishtam tamishram punah punah charvit charvanana my dear father you will never become krishna conscious again he is instructing his father Let us speak something. So I'll speak you for your benefit, fearlessly. Mother and Krishna, my dear father, you will not become Krishna conscious. Why? Paroto satova. By others' effort or by your own effort, mito or by combined effort. Why? Griha vrata na. You have taken a vrata. Vrata means no. You have taken a vrata to become happy by sense in Brahman. You have taken a vrata to become happy in this body, which can also be called griha. How do you become happy in the body through the ground, through the senses, or through the family? Now, this is the source of your happiness. You will never become Krishna conscious. Your effort, others' effort, combined effort. Forget. Adanta Gobi Vishtam Tamishu. Adanta with the uncontrolled senses. Uh, Gobi means senses. Adanta means which does is not unbridled. Vishtam Tamishu. In this condition, my father, do something. He is speaking with mercy actually to his father. Vishtam tamishram, you are entering thick darkness. Tamasoma jyotirgama. Instead of coming out of tamah, you are going dark. Just like this room can be dark, but there is something of thick darkness. You cannot see your hand also. Adant gobi vishtam tamishram, puna puna charvita charvana. What you are doing, my father? Chewing. You have already chewed many times. Since gratification is like that, it doesn't strike our head. Hundred times I've enjoyed it. Still, I cannot give it up. There's no satisfaction. So this way I enjoy it. Now I'll enjoy it this way. Then I'll enjoy it this way. No end to it. And every time you know it doesn't satisfy. But you're such a dud-headed fool. Fools, we cannot give it up and throw and take to Pralag Maharaj life. No, we stay as Indian Kashipos and we want to enjoy another way, another way. Why do you get it? It will never satisfy you. No, no. This way it didn't satisfy. A million times I've tried. A million and one time I try in a different way. Now it will satisfy. That is how actually sense gratification. Ah, so puna puna charvita charvana. Now you are again chewing, but you have already chewed and thrown. You try to chew something. You know, it's plastic, but I think maybe some sweet is there, like sugar color is there, but no sugar taste. You throw. Then after some time, again pick it up, again try. Then again throw. Million times you are doing. You are mad or what? So my father, this is the condition. नते विदु स्वार्थ गति में विष्णु, my dear father, you don't know our real separate rest, our real selfishness rather स्वार्थ means selfishness. विष्णु takes shelter of विष्णु. दुराशया ये वही अर्थ मानना. Instead of that, hoping against hope to become happy in such condition. Correct? दु आशा. दु means bad. आशा means hope. We are hoping against hope. Somehow I'll become happy in sense and jaya. It never worked, so there is hope against hope. Only. I'm hoping against hope. It's just like something I want ten thousand crores. It is hoping against hope. Simply you dream, which is no no fruitful thing. We are hoping. Adam the Gobi Vishtam Tarasya. Kate vidu sarth kate vidu Vishnu durashay vahi arthamani na. So much value we are giving to sense gratification. Like that he keeps instructing him. Then he says, my dear father, the best thing is. नेशा मती न्यावत पुरुक्रवांग्री टेक शेल्डर ऑफ़ प्योर डिवोटी ऑफ़ कृष्ण यू कैन बी सेव्ड अगेन साइड इस पोक समथिंग योर फादर आज बड़ी नो हेल्प इस पोक थ्री श्लोकस एंड देन फादर एट दिस पॉइंट वी कैन वाइड बिकॉज़ यू नो इफ यू टेल Idiot, some good instruction. He will become happy. Tell somebody something good. People today, if you tell something good for them, they become happy. And some fool flatters you, he will be very happy. If you are doing something wrong, correct? If somebody says mad or what? He is your good friend actually. But who is nowadays in the people? Our friends are like the monkeys. You know, monkey. One monkey scratches another monkey's back. Another monkey scratches another monkey. You have seen them? They remove even the. Lies is another thing of each other. So like that, and they both are very good friends. So today friendship is like that only. 
I glorify you, you glorify me. If somebody tells the truth, you are mad, stop all this, it's not good for you. We become his enemy and we feel he is my enemy, he is insulting me. So this goes on and father doesn't take the good counsel and then now he says, kill this child. Because he belongs to the enemy camp, kill this child. Allah Maharaj could not be killed. No way you can kill him. They try elephants, they put him at the feet of the elephant. Again Krishna protects him because he is a surrendered soul to the Lord. And don't try to imitate him. Okay, I'll go below elephant, Krishna is protecting him. We have to have a surrender like that. And he is not going below elephant. Not that I am a servant of Krishna, I walk on the middle of the road, Krishna will protect me. No. God has those who have then said, he is in the, what is the body can do? He is a small child. He is an emperor of the world, of the universe. Not even a small or tiny Indian. He is the emperor of the universe. And here is a small child. What he can do? But he never had any animosity towards his father. Even after all. Why? So there is a reason I will tell you. Why is the devotee doesn't have any need? There is one more meditation. When you desire, you become a materialist. You desire something. There is always a competition for it. If I don't get it, other person will get it. He becomes my enemy. Okay? Now, Facebook has come to give job in the college. One person, they said they are going to take. Or two. They are not going to take everybody. Other people feel envious. I am more qualified. All of us feel I am qualified. But therefore, material thing, there is always enmity, there is competition, there is jealousy, there is politics. Like in offices, those who have worked, you know, how much politics happens. Most of the youngsters, when they go to work in the field, first thing they report to the frustration is the politics. It's like sickening it is, like sickening. One person is criticizing another person. But when it comes to Krishna, there is no competition. You can also have it, he can also have it, you can also have it. Krishna is unlimited. I can say it is my Krishna, you can also say it is my Krishna. Correct? Now two women cannot say this is my husband and she says this is my husband. No, it is not possible. But I can say it is my Krishna, you can say it is your Krishna. Because Krishna is unlimited. There is supply unlimited. Everybody can serve him to whatever degree you want. Anybody can expect whatever degree of reciprocation Krishna is ready to give. There is no shortage. Correct? If, if somebody advances the spiritual life, I don't lose, rather I can gain. I can take an association and I can gain. Correct? Material life, what happens? One person gets promotion. Now, I, 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 I post is over. I am down. If somebody advances, I am the leader. Spiritual life, if somebody advances, I am the gainer. I still gain more. I can take his benefit and take his blessing and I also advance. That's a devotee's life. Prabhupada said, therefore devotee always addresses another Vaishnava as Prabhu. Why? Because he always feels humble. Done. So then father tries to kill him, no use. They try everything possible on earth, whatever, to throw in the fire and they give him poison. So many things. The holy cow also they celebrate in that They do whatever. He cannot be killed. Then after that is over, uh, he becomes, Hiranikeshu now becomes frustrated. He had big ego. Now he's frustrated. He's feeling very sad. He's First time he's seeing in his life, he wants to do something he cannot do. And he sees the child is, has no fear in his heart. Anybody will be scared. Then after this is over, uh, after this is over, uh, Hirani Kashipu, uh, the Shanda and Avaka tell, don't feel sad like this. Our Guru is coming, Shukra child. Now he will instruct them. And definitely when he comes, he will change. Don't worry. He's a kid only, five-year-old kid, you are taking things too seriously. So, okay, he said, okay, what can be done? And it goes on. Now, Prahlad Maharaj staying in the school, whenever there is a tiffin time or, you know, there is a college sometime, class is not there, teacher has not come. We have some free time, he said. At that time, he started instructing all the friends in the Guru Guru. And by the association now, that is a big instruction. By the session of Prahlad Maharaj, all become pure devotees. Big Harinam starts in the school itself. And all are chanting and dancing. Prahlad Maharaj instructs them. He is very powerful Acharya. And they were pure. Children are not so crooked actually. They are simple. The sons are demons, but they are not spoiled like that. Small children. Innocent. That's why children very easily can be convinced. 
And then what happened after that, the child is over. Recently we had a joke. Six year old boy in America was suspended from the school. <laughs> I just posted it. Six year old, can you imagine six year old? For speaking vulgar words from some song. And actually the mother came to plead to the school that actually he doesn't even know the meaning. It's only that song was played, he remembered the lyrics. He said it to a girl without even knowing what's the meaning. He said something. And they suspended him from the school. This is what we are learning. So child is like that, he learns good or bad. He left for the parents what example they give and what they teach. Okay? So then what happened? The Shanda and Avarka school going on. And, but they don't know, the child has turned whole into devotees. And then later, one day they enter, they see big Harinam is going on, Prahlad Maharaj is dancing, and all boys are in Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Krishna. They go and run to Hiranikashu and say, My God, what a calamity! This Avidya school, now everybody knows Vidya. All have become devotees of the Lord. So now, uh, Hiranikashu becomes wild. And he decides he will personally kill Prahlad Maharaj. Previously he had ordered, but Hiranyakashipu was very powerful. So now what happened, Hiranyakashipu calls his son and Prahlad Maharaj pays obeisance to him. And he etiquette are perfect. Father cannot find a fault in him. Etiquette wise, devotee is always perfect. But Hiranyakashipu was hissing with anger. And so many things he speaks. And so you, uh, unfortunate boy. But why unfortunate? Because you're going to inherit all the kingdom. But instead of that, you're going to die now in my hand. Eh? And he speaks so many things, I have to cut short now. And finally he says to him, uh, that you say, always say, God is everywhere. Because Prahlad Maharaj was now looking at a pillar. Narsimha, they had already come to reassure him. Don't worry. He has a very intimate relationship with Develop relationship. Lord is always with him. So he's, you know, you know, his father takes his sword out. You always say, God is there. Let me see your God come and protect you. So Prahlad, my man, if somebody is coming with a sword to kill you. So Lord is immediately come as a Narsimha. And actually, Prahlad Maharaj could see Lord has now manifested himself in the, within the pillar. So he was just taking shelter of the lotus feet of the Lord. My Lord, whatever you wish. He never had any anger to his father. He knows his senses are uncontrolled, so he is crazy. But heart of the heart, he was wishing well even, well, even for him. That's an exalted devotee. So he took his sword out and he saw, he was looking at the pillar. Hey, what your God is everywhere. Is there in this pillar? Prahlad Maharaj said, yes, he's everywhere. So he, he was a powerful man, just hit the pillar with whatever his hand or and the Lord manifested himself to prove the word of his devotee that he is everywhere. Lord is everywhere actually. Uh, he can manifest himself. He is there in Vaikuntha dancing with his devotees eternally. At the same time, by inconceivable potency, Lord sits in everybody's heart as a Paramatma. And he enters even every atom as a Paramatma in his team. Therefore, Lord is witness of everything that is happening in this universe. Sarvagyapi. Omnipresent. So then, the Nasima Deva came, so Prahiranakeshu thing, what is this interesting thing today? Half man, half lion, something new, funny thing, like a joker from a Jew. And he always thought, because everybody used to run away whenever he wanted to fight, a lot, he can fight with you. He comes with us to fight, and you know, everything fails, finally. And Nasima Deva kills him, in fact, in the door. Neither inside, neither outside. It's evening, neither day. Therefore, we did Abhishek early today because the Lord takes birth neither night, neither day. And neither in the land, neither in the sky, on the lap. Neither man, nor the animal. Half man, half lion. Nara, Simma. Nara means human being, Simma means lion. And then, uh, nails, no weapon. Like that, anything I missed out, all the conditions, blessings were satisfied. So, you may have planned to live eternally. There are many people like Hirani Krishna tried that, you're going to die on. Sometimes a doctor says, give a tablet and you live forever. The doctor also will die. And then he tears him apart and Narasimha Dev, even after that, he comes inside. Actually, it is this great devotee who is playing the part. And the Lord now, 
uh, sits on his throne. The Lord doesn't sit on anybody's throne. Only devotee, if he offers him a throne, Lord sits on that. So he sits on the throne because he knows internally what is going on. And he sits on the throne. Some of these other people come to attack with the nails. He just kills all his army who are attacks him. All blood everywhere. All the devatas have come from the universe. Starting from Shiva, Brahma, all the devatas queued up. Just like a prime minister comes, chief ministers and everybody come along. And they are standing on the road outside. Just say, this is the temple where the Lord is there. And from there only they offer prayer. They have no courage to enter. And Narasimha Deva, somehow his anger does not come down because he is very angry. Lord also gets angry when he hit his devotee, he becomes very angry. Lord is a person. Don't think there is a stupid idea. God is never angry. There are some people, people feel devotee should not become angry. Devotee also becomes angry. If he insult the Lord, he becomes angry. Hanuman burned the whole Lanka. He was angry. Okay. He, because they were insulting Lord Rana. The same way, devotee also becomes angry. But when the Lord is insulted, and the Lord also becomes because he loves the devotee. When he tortured a devotee, he was very angry. But the prayers of the demigods could not pacify him. At that time, Brahma asked Prahlad Maharaj, You go. The devatas had no courage to enter. Prahlad Maharaj enters fearlessly and falls at the pit of the And he offers, Naivo duje paradurathya vaitaranya tadvira gaya mahamridamagna chit. He said, my Lord, I am not scared of this fearful form of yours. Therefore, the faith is tested at that time. Krishna created a terrible test. He is in a most fearful form. Only the most person, 100% faith will enter. Other person, anybody will be scared. Correct? Slightest point, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, you have lack of faith. You will not enter. Are you Maharaj, 100% faith. And also advanced. He enters and offers beautiful prayers to the Lord, one after the other. Lord is very pleased. And he asks him, what benediction can I give? He said, my Lord, I am your servant, what benediction? It's my duty to serve you. Uh, but anyway, because you have asked, please forgive my father. See, he asked forgiveness for his father. He was so envious of you. He was, please forgive. So Narasimha Deva says, what you, uh, your father, I have forgiven 21 generations I liberated all of them. So the greatest service a child can do to his father is to become a good devotee. Uh, Prabhupada sometimes used to say that this is the greatest service a child can do. If you become a devotee, uh, even a father should feel like that. If my son becomes a nice devotee, maybe I cannot go back, but he can take me back to God. So like that, uh, this continues, this pastimes, and then finally, Narsimha was very pleased, all the names thus come. Okay. Shri Prabhupada ki. Yes. Narsi Madhe Bhagavan ki. Yes. Prahlad Maharaj ki. Yes.